Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to take a look at manual pitch correction with the help of a little plugin called Tune Realtime by a company called Waves. And we're going to utilize this one to allow us to manually correct the pitch of our vocals that we have already recorded but have no chance to correct other than tuning it manually instead of re-recording it. And if you're interested in that, then stay tuned. And we'll see us right after the intro. Here we are. So imagine a situation in which you've got a recording, a vocal recording of someone singing a piece of a song and you want to use that, but you found that one note or even multiple notes are a bit flat or actually quite incorrectly sung and you are unable to re-record it or you don't want to record it because a specific part of the song is really standing out to you and as nice as it is and you just need to clean up a few things here and there along the line and you want to do this. Unfortunately, although there are a few manual pitch correction tools available within Reaper directly, we've got the Retune plugin, but this one is entirely graphical. So to correct your pitch in there, you'd have to draw it with a mouse on the screen. And obviously this is not possible for us. So there's no great way of doing this with Reaper native tools. There are two main ways that come to mind when trying to do this accessibly. Number one is Melodyne, a great tool by Salamone, which is one of the industry standard ways of doing this kind of thing. This plugin itself is not accessible, but there are great efforts of making it accessible via the LVL add-on for NVDA, for example, which I've mentioned in one of my other videos where I was discussing how you can access contact, another industry standard tool, a sample player, in fact, but these ways aren't yet fully developed and I will make a video on that later. But today we are going to talk about the second way of manually pitch correcting vocals, which is a plugin called Tune Realtime by a company called Waves. And this company is one of the companies where you don't want to buy a plugin unless it's on sale. And since Waves is more or less offering sales every day or at least once per week and definitely a great sale once per month. So you should always wait for the plugin to be at a price of $29.95 or something like that instead of buying it full price. It really saves you a lot of money. Well, so you should also make sure that you're running it at one of the latest versions. I think I'm running on version 12 here, but I've heard that with version 10, this plugin is not as accessible as it is with version 12. So in the case that you cannot follow the steps that I'm showing you in just a second, make sure that you have one of the latest versions. And if you have an even newer version than I do, and it isn't accessible, then let me know in the comment section, because I'm really interested to see what they've changed over the years. Because how Waves does its plugin selling system. They sell you a version and give you just minor updates to that version, but every year they would release a new version. And in order to get that version, you would need to buy a so-called upgrade plan. And if you don't have one of those plans or you don't redeem it, you will stick with the version that you already have. And in my case, I'm stuck with version 12 here. I didn't update further. I didn't buy an upgrade plan because version 12 for me under Windows still works just fine. And that's the second thing that I have to add here. In order to enable MIDI support for this plugin, you need to click things which are shown on screen. So we need to use OCR for that. However, the OCR I'm using is only usable under Windows. There are VOCR tools under macOS, but I don't know how accessible it is for VOCR under macOS. So I'm not entirely sure if you are able to follow the steps that I will show you just in a minute on a Mac. I'm just sure that they will work under Windows and just with my specific Waves Tune Realtime version. Give it a try, however, and let me know in the comment section. I will make sure to forward the information to the people who really need it. Well, I've recorded a really, really bad vocal of me singing the C major scale. I hope so, at least. I would just sit down and 
sing something. And it sounds like this. It's really, really badly sung. I've got the track voice here. One voice, one item. There you go. And it sounds like this. So it is intentionally bad, right? I mean, I'm not a good singer at all, but I'm not a bad singer as this too. <laughs> so it's intentionally bad. And uh, it's just a recording. Just vocals here. That's all we have. And let's say we want to tune it now. We'd need to add the plugin first. So we press F on the track. Add effects to track one voice dialogue filter. Combo box collapsed. Edit blank. Now we search for tune or let's say we search for real. R-E-L. Plus one list. VST. Ray limit. Cocos. One of seven. That's number one. VST. Wave tune real time mono. Waves. Two of seven. That's great. So we can decide on the VST two or three version and we can decide if we want to have mono or stereo processing capabilities we want mono here because my recording is in mono and we want to have the vst3 version so let's arrow down a few times vst vst3 wave tune real time mono waves four of seven and that's what you want instantiate that one fx so here we are we've got the plugin instantiated this video will not go over the things that the plugin can do it can do really a lot of stuff and i would just mention how you can manually pitch correct things but this plugin also has a lot of automatic pitch correction functionalities and can do really a lot for you. This video is not meant to cover all of that. If you're interested, then watch a walkthrough video of Waves to Retime. This plugin, especially with the help of OCR, is pretty much, yeah, I'd say like 80 to 85% accessible. So give it a try. Now, if I press play, we notice that nothing's changed, right? Everything is still where we left off. Now, let's create a second track because we want to tune with MIDI. We cannot draw any curves into the window, which you can also do with Wave Tune Retime, but we, we cannot do this. It's visual and we are visually impaired. So no way to do that. Our way is to use MIDI. We will create a MIDI here. Let's let's create Control T track name. and a track here. Let's call it me. Let's submit. 0.00 pay to MIDI. Here we go. We need to send this to our main track. Why do we do that? I could have created a MIDI item directly on our voices track. That's true, but it's a bit messy because we already have an item, which is the vocal. So I want to have a separate track and I want to send this to the voice track. So I will press Alt and context menu here, which is my way of accessing the send and receive context menu. Context menu menu. Now we can use down arrow. Master send check M. Send sub menu S. There we go. We want to have a send. Adjust I slash O parameters. Right click on volume fader A. No. One voice one. Yeah, that's what you want. You want to press here and turn that, which will automatically create a send from our MIDI to our voices track. And the other way around, a receive from our voice to our MIDI track. Not save. Great. Now we will create a MIDI item, which is just long enough to hold all the information for our voice track, which is two bars if I'm not wrong. So we go to the beginning of the project. Start time selection. Set selection start. Go to bar three. Bar two, bar three. And end selection. Set selection end. And create a new MIDI item. In media file, new MIDI item is unsaved. There we go. Clear time slash loop selection. One MIDI. We will select that. MIDI. And go here. And here we are. Do, do, do. So now let's say we want to change it from this C, presumably C, to something else. I want to correct it. We will use the pitch cursor. D4, C sharp 4, C4. Let's see. Let's say we want to move it up an octave, right? Let's insert it here. So I've probably hit like every beat. So I would say quarter notes. Grid quarter. And I would insert this here. C4, one beat. Great. Now let's go to the theme of the project. One note. Play. Do, do, do. Nothing's changed, right? And this is because we need to change one more thing. Let's go back out of here. Control W. Unsave. One voice, one item. To the voice track. Open the FX list. FX. Now press F6. Unknown. This will focus the plugin window. It says unknown, so it's totally inaccessible. But now we can use OCR. By default, with NVDA, the OCR shortcut is mapped to Windows plus R. I've remapped it, but now we run the OCR command. Recognizing result document. And that's what it looks like. Speed. Tolerance. 15.0. Unc. Vibrato. No transmo N. Out. So. Sense. Wave tune real time. Range. Auto. Bass. Baritone. Tenor. MIDI input keyboard. And that is what you need to click. So I will hit enter on MIDI input keyboard. 
And now I need to close this Unknown. and re OCR here. Recognizing result document. Now let's go down a few times again. Tolerance 50 unk with router no tryout. So sense wave queue range auto base baritone header MIDI input keyboard level reference tone scale target pitch. That's what we need. We need to click on target pitch and we will click on target. Target. That should have done it. We had enabled target pitch, which will automatically allow MIDI to decide which node Rife's tune read time is going to tune to. Unknown. Let's escape two times. Unsafe. And uh, play. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it tuned me up, right? Because we added a C4. This is definitely not a C4 what I'm seeing here. Now, let's quickly show you the parameters list one voice, one item. of wave stream read time. We can tune a few things to make tuning a bit more better. <laughs> Speed one. So, for example, we can change the speed. Right now, it's set to value slider fifteen point zero ms. Fifteen millisecond. The lower it is, the more it will sound like auto tune. Let's set it to the minimum value zero point one ms. Zero dot one milliseconds. Parameter. What else do we have? No transition two. No transition value slider one hundred and twenty point zero ms. This is the time that we actually transition between the notes. Let's shorten this down to zero point. Parameter. Link on slash off three and correction four. There are some other parameters value slider one hundred, which you could play with to find out what they do or what you walk through really well. But here's one more thing that is actually interesting to you. Parameter. Let's scroll down a few times. Correction on slash off reference frequency six. You can tune your stuff to if you don't want to sit on four forty hertz all the time, but you are one of the people who experiment with four thirty two, for example, then you can change reference frequency here. Tolerance time seven. Tolerance sense eight. Vibrato depth nine. Vibrato on slash off ten. You can control if you want to have vibrato or not. Scale type eleven. And here you can change the scale. So if you want to have automatic pitch correction in a way that you set a scale and a scale root, and it should automatically move your notes into the correct scale, then you can do that here. By default, it's set to chromatic. Value slider chromatic. And it's set to A, I think. Chromatic scale root twelve. Value slider A. So that's great, right? Unsafe. Let's preplay. Isn't that great? It's automatically correcting everything because you cannot turn it off. You could if you had an automation running which has bypass all the time, but by default, it's auto tuning. And now that we have set the speed and the node correction speed to basically zero, immediate response, it really sounds like auto tune, right? But sometimes that is what you want. So now that you know how it works, you could play around with the different things here. However, there's one more thing to note. If you have listened closely to when I was OCR in the window, you noticed that we had the typical voice ranges marked on screen. We had bass, baritone, tenor, and alto, and soprano. And if you click that, then waves would be able to more precisely tune your stuff into the frequencies that you actually want to have. And it will lessen the artifacts that you hear on the note that got actually tuned to where you want it to be. Because if you hit soprano, then you're actually a bass singer, then your notes will totally sound off, or the processing will definitely be audible on the track. Whereas if you actually select bass and you're a bass singer, your artifacts will be much less and it will sound quite natural actually. So if you know which range you currently have and you want to be as precise as possible and don't want to sound as artificial as I do right now because I have set everything up as auto tuny as possible, then make sure to select the correct pitch range or voice type within the UI by just OCRing it and hitting enter on it. Right. So now with that we have a product like this. <laughs> We can just add another note. Two MIDI, one item. Go to MIDI again. One item select the item. Open it up. Go to the end of this thing. C C four one B two. Go with B and let's say we want to have D sharp D sharp two D two D two instead of D three. D two one beat. And now let's play. Unsafe. This is gonna sound really weird. Beat one. Do -do 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 could make me into kind of a robot -y thing. But yeah, that's what it is, right? It can do me really, really bad. I've not changed anything. I think by default it's set to something like baritone. I'm not entirely sure. 
but you should definitely do that if you're interested to use this thing in a reproduction scenario, not just for having fun like I'm doing right now. So this is my preferred way of correcting if you vocal flaws or stuff that really falls out of the line. And I hope that helps you somewhat. It's not the most powerful tool out there. It's not Melodyne. It's really just a cheap alternative. Autotune is one of the accessible ways to do manual pitch correction too, but Autotune is a topic for another video at some point. However, Waves Tune Retime is really a good alternative if you don't have too much money to spend on plugins. So consider that if you want to get started with manual pitch correction in an accessible way within Reaper, Logic, or whichever DAW you're using, it should work no matter what. Thanks for watching the video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section below the video. If you liked what you've just watched, then like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a part of the community. Thanks for watching. Until next week. Bye-bye.